Hello from the World Peace Forum in Vancouver. Today we are happy to present two speakers. First, Ingo Schmidt explaining the differences between Marxism and Keynesianism. And in the second part, the second workshop, we will listen from Alison Ayers, who warns us about the nature of fascism. Here is Ingo. Um, when all of a sudden the idea that the civilized world is occupied by people who have no other desire than engaging in trade um, turned into this mass slaughter of, well, largely workers but also peasants, others, poor people, ordinary people being slaughtered uh, in an imperialist war, that was a major blow to the liberal idea that if you have trade, you don't have competition between great powers, you don't have war. And the second blow to liberalism in terms of uh, economics was the Great Depression. Marxists for a long time were known as the ones to talk about crisis all the time. So Marxists always uh, had it difficult uh, when capitalism was prosperous. If there's no crisis, everybody says, look at these stupid Marxists. Uh, they predict a crisis one after the other. No crisis is happening. There's ever more profits, prosperity. Well, and if worse comes to worse, even higher wages for the workers. But that's not so important. The higher profit is the uh, main part. Well, that didn't happen during the Great Depression. Not just uh, did workers lose their jobs. They were also capitalists losing profits. Well, and this is uh, the point Marxists were really jumping at. Uh, they thought, now it's our time to explain the crisis, to come to terms with it, and dis um, design economic policies. Uh, obviously, uh, there was uh, already the Soviet Union. There was Soviet communism. The party line was imminent crisis of capitalism. That was 1928. Well, in 1929, it actually did happen, so it seems they were bang on. They should have been ready to deal with it. Um, and there was a certain upswing of communist-led struggles. I mentioned a few already um, around popular fronts, uh, about uh, uh, the CIO. The interesting thing is about the popular front uh, um, that that was an alliance with the bourgeoisie. And the bourgeoisie, the capitalists, are the guys who don't like a capitalist crisis. That's the guys who want to make a profit. What happened then was that um, the Soviet Marxists uh, kind of got a bit more cautious about talking about the collapse of capitalism. Well, this softening of the diagnosis of collapsing capitalism was uh, taken by uh, the Soviet rival Trotsky and his followers um, as reason, one of the reasons uh, to start something new, the Fourth International, and the founding document, or the kind of call to uh, start anew the Fourth International in 1938, uh, was to reinforce the idea of imminent capitalist collapse. A uh, collapse of capitalism, as we know with hindsight for sure, w was avoided by embarking on the largest uh, arms uh, race in world. Well, there were larger arms races later, not as disastrous. Uh, anyways, the collapse didn't happen, so that was in terms of practical policies not too uh, important. What the Trotskyites had to say, let's see uh, whether the Social Democrats uh, had something more important to say. Well, the Social Democrats, uh, always eager long before the Soviets discovered the Popular Front, uh, were social democrats eager to uh, be good friends uh, with the bourgeoisie and because the bourgeoisie, as I said, doesn't like crisis, um, uh, the social democrats uh, had the idea of saying there won't be a crisis anymore, particularly not if you capitalists talk to me, social democrat, then we can 
uh, kind of work it out and we can avoid uh, this uh, free market Marxists call it that anarchy of the markets and the anarchy of the markets uh, leads to crisis if we capitalists and social democrats and the union leaders just get our heads together we talk it out what is a proper wage what is a proper uh, profit then there won't be any crisis um, well capitalists uh, didn't want the social democratic lesson and they got a crisis and so um, social democracy had to recognize, well, we were not able to avoid this crisis with our great uh, class collaboration because there was nobody to col collaborate uh, with us. Um, and they had to change their tone, and so they did. Uh, and when 1929 happened, uh, what they said was, it's a cyclical crisis. This is uh, quite normal because they had all red marks. Uh, and angles, it's a cyclical crisis. Uh, these things come and go, and once this one will be gone, uh, then we suggest again to the capitalist uh, to, uh, to be good friends. Uh, obviously, it didn't happen because the World War happened. There were even Marxists uh, in trade unions, um, mostly affiliated with the Social Democratic Party. So what these Marxists and trade unions had to say about the crisis was exactly the same what the Social Democrats were saying. Well, it's too bad if you lose your job, but there isn't anything we can do about it. Keynes, the guy who gave the name to this theory, uh, or after whom the theory later was named, uh, was a different kind of guy than all these Marxists. He was a member of the British bourgeoisie. He was a high, well, he was just an economics professor, but also he was an advisor to uh, British governments at various points in time. And what uh, he was ex um, most prominently battling was uh, what uh, his companion, Joan Robinson, uh, would later call the Treasury View. The Treasury is the British uh, Ministry of Finance. Uh, and those were the guys that was a stronghold of, if you don't have money, you can spend it. And that was a strong belief. And if enough people, particularly uh, if they are holding power, the tools of power, of displaying power, uh, it actually does matter quite a bit what you think. And these guys thought, we don't have money, so we won't spend anything. And Keynes was arguing uh, against them, suggesting his famous policies of, well, if we don't have the money, we might take out the credit, and then we can spend money. Uh, so there was a great uh, third way between all kinds of socialism and liberalism, and that was Keynesianism. And since the Americans wanted to um, secure world capitalism, they happily embarked on those policies, which were quite successful uh, for a while. So what was uh, Keynes talking about in theoretical terms? Well, first, he was a fierce um, uh, critic of economic liberalism. According to economic liberalism, should you have a crisis, in the first place it can't happen, but should it happen, uh, there's an easy fix to that. Just lower the wages, then you have higher profit. That sounds like a bastard version of Marx. Um, and then uh, everything will be fine again. Keynes criticized that in a very subtle but very uh, brilliant way. Uh, he said, if capitalists in the face uh, of a crisis lower their wages, one of the two following things will happen. Either capitalists will lower their prices, 